So why did I choose Grand Seiko for my, my Grail watch? Well, a year ago, I would have thought Grand Seiko, I didn't know anything about them, and I would have thought it was just an excuse really for Seiko to charge more. Um, I was wrong about that, there is a difference. I was in Watches of Switzerland, the shop uh, in Heathrow Airport in December, and um, I had a good look at a lot of the brands. I hadn't seen a lot of these watches in person, I'd just seen them online. Uh, Tissot, Oris, Longines. But there was two brands in there, two, only two, that for me, caught my eye, I went back to and had a good second look. One was IWC, and the other was Grand Seiko. Hello and welcome to The Perfect Wrist. This is a brand new channel um, devoted to my watch collecting journey. It's been a brief journey, uh, only 12 months. Um, and in that time, I've become, I think this, this watch collecting hobby uh, gets a hold of you and I have become quite obsessed. Uh, I've learned from others, the best on YouTube um, available. And a year ago, I didn't even know what an automatic watch was. I'd, I bought a watch, I let it sit for two days, and when it stopped ticking, I was going to take it back because I thought it had broke. Anyway, so I've learned a lot over the last year, um, and I will be doing a full uh, series of, of videos about my each individual piece, um, what it means. It's a varied collection, lots of colours, different movements, different price ranges. Um, but this first video is about a particular watch, the latest acquisition, that I've, I've been hunting for that one grail piece, personally to me, a grail piece, um, and I think I've found it. Uh, there isn't another video on YouTube about this particular watch. I've uh, had a good look, because I wanted to research before I purchased this, um, and I, so really this could be the first video on YouTube in the West, anyway, um, on the Grand Seiko SBGV215. So if you'll just indulge me for a couple more minutes before we get to the watch, I'll explain why I arrived at this particular decision. Well, one watch that I found last year that has become one of my favourite watches is the Seiko Sari 57. It's very similar to the Saab, 50, uh, Saab 33. And I I didn't realize until I started collecting watches that I actually have quite a big wrist. It's uh, 18 and a half centimeters, about 7.4 inches. So some of the smaller 36 millimeter watches do seem quite small on me. But this Sari 57, I love the simplicity of the design. Um, and when I was thinking about a Grail watch, really a straightforward black simple dial um, and uh, dolphin hands is perfect. In fact, we'll just have another look at that. Um, I love it. So I knew that my Grail watch uh, needed a black simple dial and that uh, Grand Seiko really did it for me. If you've never held a Grand Seiko, it's really worth just popping into a jeweler's, just trying one, just, just hold it in your hand. You can feel the difference, the, the, um, the weight, the dimensions, exceptional. But of course then, once I started looking, that opens the rabbit hole, doesn't it? And which black dial to choose? So when you start looking through the catalogues, there's the SBGP003, there's the SBGV223, the SBGP011, all 40mm cases, standard um, GS case design, but slightly different bracelets, very slight differences between them. They all have the quartz movement, which I'll explain in a minute. Adrian Barker from Bark and Jack also did a comparison uh, between the 
smaller SBG X261, which is 37 millimeters, and the Rolex Explorer. That's a very good watch, as in something to watch. Um, I pretty much decided on the quartz movements, the 9F quartz movements. Um, they're handmade. They're probably the best quartz movements in existence. They have a 50-year service interval, uh, which sounds great. Um, if you ever see one, there's, there's plenty online about them. That they're, they're metal. They're, they're little, little metal movements. Um, very precision accurate. And while I was looking through the catalogue, I also found this. The SPGV215. Now, because my wrist is quite large, you know, 40 centimeters, 40 millimeters is the perfect size for me. Um, 39.40. And this watch has a slightly different case design, if you look. It's uh, more squat, flatter, with a smaller dial. And there isn't another video I can find about this watch. It's quite an event opening a Grand Seiko. Uh, the packaging is a cut above everything else. They really put a lot of thought into it. Um, and there's the watch. I, uh, in a past life, I was an investment advisor. And something I would never do is buy into a hyped market or pay over the odds for anything. So some of the other luxury brands are a little bit out of my reach and, and I wouldn't even consider them because of that. Grand Seiko, is, I, I got this for, I got it from Japan, I got it for half price. It's pre-owned. Um, and I think the Japanese, when they describe things, they uh, under-promise and over-deliver because it was described as AB condition, which is really very good but for me it's excellent there's hardly a mark on it so i wouldn't worry about buying um from japan with that level of description so we'll clasp at the back lovely very nicely done 10 10 mil width and the lug width is 18 millimeters. Just have a little look at the case. It's slightly different to other cases. It's got an edge to it and it drops inward towards the back. Holes for easy release of the strap and the bracelet. It's got female female end links. I'll do an outside shot soon because natural daylight is always the best. Isn't it nice? The other thing is the solidity. The way that they polish the way that Grand Seiko polished the watches. The, the bracelet feels different. It's got almost a, a rubber, a rubbery feel to it on the edges. You'll notice as well that this has a lovely H-link bracelet. And of the ones that I looked at, I think it's the only one with an H-link. So it's quite unique, this watch. I'll take it outside and we'll do a wrist shot.